Ooh, doggy. That is beautiful. Look at the movement on her. So, Spicy Reef is on. Hello from Seattle, from Colorado. Just returned from my LFS. And I was just going down there because they send me a coupon every couple of months to get um, a discount on dry goods or frozen food. Spirulina brine shrimp, excuse me, and spirulina mysis shrimp. Now my anemones, anemones really like this stuff and so does everybody else. Does. While I was there, they also had a sale going on their lives. I haven't been that excited about anything until today. Oh my goodness, they had a sale going on. Look at that bad boy. That bad boy is huge. It's beautiful. It's just a common regular um, rose bubble tip anemone. It's not rainbow or anything special, but it's huge and I'm hoping my clownfish really haven't taken to the rainbow bubble tips that I've got in there that I've picked up from some of the local reefers here. Um, so hopefully a nice big one like this, hopefully they're going to be all over it. We'll find out. I don't even know where to put this inside the tank. I mean, come on. It's so big. I want to put him on my Nem Island, but I don't know. He's so big, I don't think he's going to stay there. I hope this isn't too much water for the tank. <laughs> Look at that. Oh yeah. Let the acclimation begin. Look at how big that is. So I take off for the weekend, a four day weekend, and lo and behold, an escape is trying to happen here. I cannot believe I was not here to prevent this. Although, I'm not sure what I could have possibly done to prevent this. <laughs> anyway, now I'm left with a dilemma. How am I gonna get this Nem back on top of the island instead of on the actual opposite side where I cannot enjoy it whatsoever. I see a couple of tentacles. If I look on the side of the aquarium or if I get down on my knees, I can look under and see it. Well, so what I do is I get this pump. I have this uh, fantastical idea. I'm going to strap the pump with some rubber bands to um, some pipe. <laughs> and I'm going to blast the foot and see what happens. I think we can see that foot is moving away from the blast. Again, there's the blast coming from right down there and the little pump. And we see it's really pointed and directly at that foot. I go look on this at this on the computer from the screen. I can't really. All right, you guys, come on. Get it. I'm not feeding you. I'm not feeding you. Move it. Move it. Okay. We can see. It really. It might just pop off. I don't know. That seems to me to be the bottom of the foot. I don't know, maybe the bottom of the foot is still up in, inside the rock and this is just the outer edges of the of the NIM before you get to the tentacles which are completely on the other side of that. But hopefully, because I'm pretty sure I saw that foot um, coming toward us a little bit more earlier and now I'm definitely seeing it go away. Well, doesn't look like a whole lot of progress here. Stop it, I'm not feeding you. <laughs> but it is moving up. Come around the corner here, you can see that big giant foot. It's kind of re-engaging the rock farther away from us there. Just by a little bit. But uh, we're creeping up on the witching hour. 
and I don't want to let up because it really looks like it's making its way back up on top. If I let up, then um, <laughs> it's going to just go right back down, I think. So I think I need to leave that blasting there. And we're coming on mm, an hour and a half left of light here. And I usually crash in about three hours. So we'll see how long it takes for it to... Um, to move a little bit more, but I really don't want to leave that on all night. It's sure taking a punishment though. It's not moving very fast. I've got that little lemony upstairs and it, it'll scoot across the entire aquarium in half a day. We're looking at a total of six hours now. And it's barely budged, maybe an inch. So this is how I ended up doing it. Let's uh, pretend that this is the uh, anemone and she's got her hold on this rock. And let me tell you, it was a little bit easier than what I thought it was going to be. Um, my nails are usually short, so I grew out my nails long so that I could get under there. But this rock here that I have, um, it kind of crumbles a little bit. And so that gave me the idea that I could get under here without doing too much damage. And I don't know how other rock is, but I was able to get my nails. That pulling up on the camera. I was able to get my nails and slowly pull, kick on the rock. At the same time, I'm feeling the anemone, right? Because it has a different texture than the slimy rock, even though that rock is slimy like anemone that you can definitely feel around because it was under, it was literally under the, um, the island there as you see and I could not get to the foot. <clears throat> so there was places like, like down in this crevasse where it had its foot down inside there but I could feel around the edges and as I pulled up on the edges of that crevice and I was able to get my fingernails under there and pull it up, pull it up it let go of the inside. It did not like me doing this. Um, and, and so it didn't take too much effort. I was actually pretty surprised. As soon as I started lifting on that foot, I maybe, <clears throat> I maybe lifted about an eighth of an inch on there. And then I was able to really lightly, I was able to really lightly get my whole finger under there and it just kind of came up. And it was, the entire foot was in a spot like that. But as soon as I got an eighth of an inch, <clears throat> excuse me, as soon as I got an eighth of an inch in there, that was all it took. And it kind of free floated off into my hand. What I did is I took the anemone from the side of the island and I, with my hand, I just kind of gently put it there. I had turned off all the pumps um, in the tank, so no water flow whatsoever. And I put the rest of the anemone back there again like it's brand new. And there was a nice crevice there I thought it would want to put its foot into. Um, but this crevice also went off the side of the island again. Uh, so let's pretend this is the crevice and this is the, the side of the island. And this is the nem. And I put the nem, the nem's foot right into that crevice as best I could. And I took a bunch of live rock and I blocked off the side of the island because I thought if it's going to go anywhere it's going to try and climb up these rocks and hopefully it doesn't like that. Um, so yeah, that's what I did and and what it ended up doing is crawling up this other side. <laughs> and I really liked where it is now. I wish more of it was to the front but I like where it is now and the clown loves it. So that in short is what I did. I just lifted an eighth of an inch and the whole thing came off. So I don't know if that helps anyone out there that's um, dealing with these NEMs that move all over your tank, but this is the first one that would not stop <laughs> moving around to places that I didn't like. Uh, the other ones, a couple of them moved around, but I, I didn't mind where they planted themselves inevitably. This one, though, was just stuck to the side. It loved it there. There was good water flow. Uh, it did take about... Um, 
It took about a good three hours to latch, to, to move and to latch on, maybe four hours. Now, I can't exactly remember because I didn't click the timer on, but it was, it was somewhere around there. And I, I turned the water flow back on after about one hour on one of the pumps that didn't affect the tank, that didn't affect the flow inside so much, but it, it, um, it helped keep the water moving. So that way the, the, the whole nitrifying bacteria stuff could continue. Um, and we don't kill anything off and start causing a cycle, right? So anyway, after one hour, I started low flow, low flow, and then I slowly increased the flow. And as soon as I saw that it was, um, it was not going to be moving because of the water, then I turned the flow back up. And that was probably around the two hour, three hour mark that I had it full blast again. So anyway, there you go. There's uh, one way to move an M. Spicy Reef, what you're doing is awesome and amazing. Thank you. Feeding the NEMS. A little bit of um, brine shrimp, frozen brine shrimp, spirulina. I thawed it out for the last uh, three or four minutes. And I just get it in this big giant squeeze ball deal. Put it in the tank. Look at them go, they want it. Well, you'll have to go in, except for you, <laughs> to the NEM to get it. Reload. Make sure all the NEMs get a little bit. Everybody likes a little bit of brine shrimp. They go. So feeding the nem, the brine shrimp, was kind of one way to get him in there. Look at him <laughs> protect. Look at her protecting her territory. I didn't even see her in there. That's hilarious. Spicy Reef here signing off. I got it. How do you know if it's up?